Question. Um, actually, Coach Frost just uh, told me the other day we need to talk about it, so we haven't decided yet. Um, either, I'll tell you this, it'll either be right before we leave or it'll happen right when we get there. Do you have a, good, you have a pretty good sense of your depth chart at this point now that you have had the most recent scrimmage? Yeah, I think, you know, some guys are, are solidified and there's still positions. You know, take the Nichols, for example. You know, it's right now it's or, 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 and I got to see who's going to have the best practice. And it might be that all year. I feel like we got three competent guys right now, and it might be whoever practices the best that week gets to go out there first snap. Now, I assume that all those guys are going to play. They're all playing on special teams, just like it is at some other positions. Uh, but we, we got the luxury right now of having some guys, <coughs> excuse me, that can all go out there and be a starter. I think it's a great thing to have. Great problem to have because we have to have good practice now, or you don't get to walk out there first. What is that like specifically in the nickel spot in comparison to what you've had the last couple of years with one guy having three? How does that make a difference? Yeah, I think. Well, I mean, just surely you got to be on your A game every day. You know, uh, in the past, not like, not trying to say that it didn't happen, but you could have, you know, been had a bad day and still not feel that heat on you a little bit. You know, with some of those younger guys. Isaac may not have been ready at the beginning of the year. He transitioned to being ready at the end of the year. But now we got three guys in there, and everybody on the defense knows that any three of them can play. So let's have a great day every day. What did Isaac show you at the end of last year? What did he do to get himself ready for that opportunity at the end of last year? Yeah, I think, you know, just his comfort with, with the defense, uh, his level of film study, knowing what's about to happen to him, and then just walking out on the field for those last two games when, when JoJo was hurt. You know, Isaac, we didn't miss a beat. He played really good football. Was there things he could have done better? Absolutely. But he went out there and, and played really good football against some really good football teams, and, and we were we were proud of what he did out there. What did the scrimmage look like to you from your standpoint, and specifically maybe in the pass rush? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, it's always hard because you're not going to be able to tackle the quarterback, right? Yeah. But I was pleased with the pass rush um, in the scrimmage. I, th I thought overall really, really uh, uh, a much better scrimmage than we had the first time. Tackling was good. Uh, we had one um, really big bust that led to a touchdown, so that's got to get cleaned up. A few communication errors, uh, personnel subbing uh, packages. Those went in a lot smoother than the first uh, scrimmage. We had a little little uh, sticky point transitioning from base to nickel, nickel dime, those types of things, and we we got that worked out. So I thought the the scrimmage was was good for us. Scott mentioned that one of the best things about having O'Shawn Mathis in the building has been the effect he's had on the guys around him, Blaze, Mari's, Garrett's. Um, what, what have you seen in that regard? What, what does it do for those guys to have a guy like O'Shawn in the room? Yeah, similar to the nickel position, it's it's just been more competition and more more guys that everybody sees now. There's five guys and any of them can walk out there and nobody would blink an eye, right? And everybody has to raise up their level of competition when you get a new guy in the room that can compete for a starting job, for a starting rotation. Guys that no, understand like, hey, this isn't play around time anymore. Every rep counts, every rep's being filmed, every rep's being graded, and just having more of those guys in the building helps. At safety, what have you seen from Miles Farmer? Yeah, so Miles Farmer, he's doing an incredible job of communicating with the, with the back end. Uh, I, I can tell right now from Miles, just watching him about his day-to-day -day business, listening to him in the back end, I can tell how much it means to him and how important this is to him. Uh, so I've just seen a lot of growth you know, in, in the in the leadership piece of it, and, and also mentally for Miles. You, you mentioned or he needed to maybe work on his man coverage and his tackle, obviously, but um, those two areas specifically, he needed to grow. Yeah, I think you know he he's out there. He jumps up. He takes more reps than everybody in one on ones. He knows what he's got to do to get a little bit better, just that much better. And he's really taking it upon himself to, like I said, you, you know, you see it when you're younger, and you kind of. You know, some of those drills that aren't necessarily full speed, we're working on tackling, we're working on man coverage, you kind of see a little sloppiness. Now from him, it's dialed in every single time. Hey, what kind of player can Tommy help you guys in this defense? Yeah, I think Tommy, Tommy's got the, uh, the ability to be a very special player. Uh, once again, he's a guy that, that came in um, in the spring. You saw a lot of uh, flashes, but it wasn't always doing the right thing because he didn't know what, he, what always was going on with him. I've seen him grow a lot in the defense as well. And I think that he's got an opportunity to be a really special corner in this league. We saw Devin Drew out there last week. How is he getting acclimated now? And sort of what's a realistic expectation? For him yeah, it's been, it's, been, uh, it's been pretty amazing, actually. The guy came in 
Um, first off, Coach Dawson and, and the GAs have done an unbelievable job meeting extra with him, getting him ready. He's went out there, and you expect those guys to come out there, and you, you want to see what they can do, right? Can he play three technique? Can he, can he play the run? Can he go rush the passer? And you expect there's going to be errors and blow-ups everywhere. There hasn't been. There hasn't been with him. Right now he's dialed in, he's operated, and he's going to compete for a, a chance to play. You know, realistically in Ireland, you get here late, you expect him to take some reps. Uh, how many? I don't know. We'll see through this week. But I expect him to take some reps in, uh, in, in Dublin. Eric, have you started zoning in on Northwestern? And if so, what are your early impressions of that team? Yeah, so uh, today was kind of the first day we introduced some things um, for, from Northwestern. Obviously, uh, you know, Coach Fitzgerald always brings a very disciplined operation. Uh, they're going to know what they're supposed to do. They're going to do it right. They're not going to make errors. They're not going to have penalties. Uh, so I, I'm, I really respect what they do on offense. Uh, you know, also they have one of the, the best tackles in the league, and they've got a running back that's, that's really good. So I expect them to come out and try to run the ball and be physical. And their quarterback's now got a lot of experience in this league too, so I think that he's going to be able to deliver the ball where it needs to go. Uh, but i got a lot of respect for their team. Gosh, I don't know if I've ever thought about that, but there hasn't been a, a ton of drama. There hasn't been a lot of a lot of things for me to manage. There hasn't been a lot of issues come up. And uh, like I told you guys before, I just I like our team right now a lot. And, and just not even from the players, the ability that way. I just like our team, the way guys work, the way guys compete. The way they understand this is a business, I just I just like where their their heads at, and I, I think that uh, you know we, we got a we got a really good football team that that plays together. Does, does the roster limitations, given it's a Big Ten game, how difficult is that? Especially when you have all these guys here, and you're gonna have to make some hard decisions. Which position could maybe might be the toughest to get down to? The well, I mean, the good thing is is we get to bring them all over, right? So you know, it's not like you got to go over with 74 and then. And then hope hope it works out. You're going to get over there with your 110 or however many they allow us to bring. And so if somebody gets hurt or somebody you know blows up, we have the opportunity to switch them out. But that'll be a hard decision. Uh, you know, I think you got it down to you know maybe 80 that are going to play or going to play on special teams. So there's really a hard decision on you know that last 10 or something like that. And then you know there's going to be some redshirt guys and those types of things. But it, it'll be hard to get that last. You know, four or five or six guys limited down. Do you think that that goes up until game time, or do you, do you know that going in? Like, no, do you know that when you get up. No, that'll that'll go up to game time. Uh, once again, uh, it, a lot of it has to do with special teams. Yeah. You know, if somebody is needed on special teams and we got to bring them up, maybe that you know that third corner. Just an example. I don't need yeah. you know. Maybe that you know the third corner, the fourth corner. Maybe he's there right now, but it's a close battle, and he's not on teams, and we need to bring another guy up to play teams. He's going to have to be that fourth corner, you know what I mean, or linebacker or nickel or however it works out. So those are going to be some probably up until Thursday uh, before the game. Eric, you talked about Nash and Stephon, that competition. How's that looked in the last few days? Yeah, I think, you know, <laughs> both of those guys, once again, they have earned the right to be on the field in double. Um, Who's going to walk out there first? Who's going to play more snaps? I don't know. Uh, you know, and both of them have a really good skill set, a little bit different skill set. Uh, you know, Nash plays with a ton of power. Um, you know, Stefan can get on the move and do some of those things. But those guys have done a really nice job in camp, and, and we're all going to see both those guys playing a lot of Big Ten football. Thank you. Where is Blaze Gunnerson at for you now? Yeah, I mean, Blaze Gunnerson's a guy that you know he just had he had some injuries early in his career took him a little bit longer but he's in a really good place right now and, and he's another guy does he deserve to play absolutely he's going to play reps you know we got a uh, you know a lot of guys on that edge that can go but blaze had a really good scrimmage you know he had a really good scrimmage he made some some really nice plays he had a great effort in the football uh, so it couldn't be more proud of where blaze is at right now is it a challenge when you've got so much depth in that edge spot to, to work in guys like blaze and jamari and make sure they're getting their reps so they can continue yeah, I think that that's always a it's always a challenge and it's always a, a management piece of the puzzle, right? And you gotta, uh, like I said, those guys have earned reps. It's not like we're giving them reps just to just to be, hey, nice guy. Those guys have earned the, the right to be on the football field. So, uh, Coach Dawson and, and myself, you know, upstairs and downstairs are gonna have to manage that a little bit throughout the game. How many guys do you think you can play at safety and feel good about being out there at safety? Uh, you know, I, I think there's. At least four, probably five, that, that we feel good about being in the football game. 
Um, you know, safety's a little bit harder to rotate. You want to get some fresh legs in there, a little harder to rotate than, than on the edge because there's so much stuff going on. Uh, but there's definitely a lot of guys that can get in the game, and those guys need to play on special teams as well. Is it, did it surprise you that Omar Brown was able to acclimate as quickly? Is he one of those four or five? Yeah. Uh, yes, he, he is. And no, it did not surprise me. Uh, the guys play a lot of football. You know, I mean, he's a one double A All American or, or, or however, you know, whatever awards he won. He's played a lot of football, and the transition was not hard for him. He's a smart football player, and he just wants to be on the field. So he was willing to do whatever, learn whatever we need him to learn. He's, he's learned a lot of spots for us in the different packages, nickels and dimes and bases. So he's a, he, he's a really good addition to the football team. Eric, you know, now a school in session, how do things change for you guys from what you've kind of accomplished at, uh, at practice? There's more of these guys at least. I don't think school starts till next week. Oh, is that right? Yeah, so it's good for me right now. <laughs> it's probably, yeah, LPS started, so my kids went back to school, so that's good. But I think, you know, I think uh, school's actually starting while we're in Ireland, so I think that'll be a, a little bit of a, a piece of the puzzle that needs to get managed. I know we're bringing some academic support people over to help them get through their, uh, their classwork that they need to get done, but that will be a, a little bit, you know, more of the puzzle. Right now, it's great because we have a ton of time as a staff. We have a ton of time with the guys. Now, once school starts, we're getting that 20-hour rule, and you just get less time to sit and watch film and do all the kind of things. Can you get a good viewpoint on, on how the offense is progressing? I mean, what's your takeaways on the way this offense is looking? Yeah, I think the, the offense has done a tremendous job uh, transitioning from the spring to the fall. Um, you know, I know in springtime they wanted to get the new offense put in, and there's a lot of stuff getting thrown at those guys, and now it's the second time through for them, and they've done a, a really good job. They've given us some really tough looks, you know, both in the pass game and the run game, formationally, motion stuff. Um, so it's been great for us because we've got to look at a lot of different things. Uh, there shouldn't be anything that anybody throws out there where we're like, oh, man, we don't know how to fit that or we don't know how to line up to that formation because our offense has done a great job with would give it to us and um, you know they got a ton of playmakers over there too so I'm excited to watch those guys get the ball in their hands and run around when it's not us trying to tackle them somebody else Is this scary, this yeah you know I, I think first off those running backs are doing a really good job and, and it's hard for me to even know who's in the game because they're all hitting so hard and they're making good runs Trey Palmer's done an op excellent job making plays Travis Boclex uh, a matchup nightmare uh, they just got a lot of weapons all over the field what about you? You got any questions? What's your name? Kale. What? Kale. Kale, you got any questions? No? <laughs> All right. Sure. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> See you guys. Thanks, guys.